So this lecture is part of an online algebraic geometry course on schemes and will be about linear systems. So a linear system of divisors is a sort of geometric way of defining sections of sheaves um, used in the days before sheaves had been invented. So people were sort of implicitly working with sheaves back in the early days of algebraic geometry, but just using a different language for it. Um, so we'll just work with, um, we'll take our varieties X to be um, non-singular projective varieties over an algebraically closed field. Um, if you, you can do this in more generality, but you get some minor extra complications that I don't want to think about. So we recall that a divisor is more or less the same thing as an integral linear combination. Um, so we might take sum of n i p i, n i in z, of um, irreducible co-dimension one subvarieties p i. For instance, for a curve, the p i would just be points, and a divisor is a collection of points with multiplicities where the multiplicities are possibly negative. And you call the divisor D is effective, means all the ni are greater than or equal to zero. So it's more or less um, a sub um, a sub variety of co-dimension one, except again you're allowed multiplicities. Um, and now a complete linear system. of um, a variety D naught is equal to um, all effective divisors that are linearly equivalent to D zero. So what this means is that um, it's the set of all divisors D such that D minus D zero is equal to F for some function F. You remember this is the divisor of zeros, whereas usually you count a pole as, as being um, a, a zero of negative order. So we can rephrase this in terms of line bundles. Suppose that L naught is the line bundle of D naught. So the line bundle of D naught is the one whose sections F are just rational functions whose poles, uh, wh whose poles are at most D naught. In other words, um, this means F plus D naught is greater than or equal to zero. Th th this means it's effective. So you remember saying a divisor is at least zero is just the same as saying all its multiplicities are at least zero, which is the same as saying it's effective. So in other words, um, if we map any function f to d, which is um, f, sorry, that should be round brackets there, f plus d naught, then um, this is, um, this bit here is an effective divisor. So we get a map um, so from global sections of L naught um, to divisors equivalent um, to D naught, sorry, effective divisors, which is just the linear system. Um, and furthermore, if you've got two global sections, F and G, then F and G have the same divisor. Is this just the same as saying F is equal to lambda G for lambda some non-zero element of K? 
So what we do is, is we get the set of the linear system of D naught. can be identified with the projective space of all global sections of L0. So remember, this is a vector space of global sections. And this just means you take the corresponding projective space. So, so this shows that Linear systems or complete linear systems are more or less the same as taking all sections of a line bundle, except that it has dimension one less because the linear system is really just a projective space of the corresponding line bundle. So let's look at some examples of this. Um, first of all, let's take X to be P1. And let's take the divisor d naught to be n times the point at infinity. Um, then um, we want that the linear, then, then, then the corresponding line bundle L naught is isomorphic to O of n, and the sections just correspond to polynomials um, a n x to the n plus, plus a naught of degree less than or equal to n. And the zeros of this polynomial, which corresponds to the linear system, so the linear system is just um, all div uh, effective divisors of degree n, which just means collections of n points. The points are allowed to be the same. You 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 kind of points with are, are allowed to have multiplicities. Um, so that's a particularly simple example. Um, you can do the same thing for x being p to the n. Um, again, we can take the divisor to be n m times the um, points at infinity. Um, again, this will correspond to the, the line bundle O will be isomorphic to O of N, and the sections correspond to homogeneous polynomials of degree N, and the linear system um, corresponds to all um, um, it sort of corresponds roughly to all hypersurfaces of degree n, sort of degree m, I guess, um, except that's not quite correct because you allow sort of degenerate hypersurfaces. They're allowed to be reducible and they're allowed to have components with multiplicities bigger than one and so on. So, so saying they're all hypersurfaces should be taken with a, with a small grain of salt. Um, next, um, we can have um, the, the, the complete linear system of divisors corresponds to all sections of the corresponding line bundle. Um, more generally, we can have an incomplete linear system. which might correspond to um, some subspace of sections. So here the, 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 the element of a linear system corresponds to the zeros of a section. So here we're just looking at the zeros of some subspace of sections. For example, um, let's take um, x to be the two-dimensional projective plane, and let's take D naught to be the line at infinity. Now here, the global sections of, um, of the corresponding sheaf will just be 
um, rational functions with at most a pole of order one at infinity. They're allowed to have a pole on D naught. So it's spanned by one X and Y. Here we're taking coordinates X, Y, Z for the projective plane. And if you can find them um, to the obvious affine plane in P squared, that the, the global sections of this line bundle are just all linear functions. Um, now, if you take the complete linear system corresponding to this, you just get all lines in P2. So let's take the subspace just spanned by X and Y. So this is going to be an incomplete linear system. So this will be all linear functions of the form AX plus BY. And the zeros of AX plus BY just look like this. So they're just going to be all lines through the origin. So this is an incomplete linear system. So a typical line might be y minus 2x. Um, so, so this would be some section of the space, and this would correspond to this line here of the linear system, y equals 2x. And what you notice is that this linear system has a base point. So a base point is a point in all divisors of the linear system. Well, um, a base point just corresponds um, to a common zero of all sec of all sections in the subspace you've chosen. Um, now you remember that if we had a collection of sections of a line bundle, it gave rise to a map to projective space, um, and this map was well defined on the whole of the variety if and only if the sections generated the line bundle. So um, you can see that the sections generate the line bundle. Um, just means that for each point, there's some non-zero section of the line bundle. And this, so sections generating the line bundle is, is equivalent to saying there are no base points. So if we're working with line bundles, we say we get that the map to projective space is well defined everywhere, provided the sections generate the line bundle. If you translate this into the language of linear systems, it just means the linear system has no base points. So that, that there's no base point that's a zero of all the divisors or equivalent that, that's a zero of all the sections you've got there. So in this particular case, we get a map from P2 to P1, except it's not actually defined everywhere. So here we get um, a map from P2 to P1, and it just takes the point X, Y, Z to the point X colon Y. And you see it's not defined at the base point, which is um, 0, 0, 1. Um, and uh, so, so in general, if you've got a linear system of divisors, you get a morphism from some open set of your space X to projective space, where the projective space is actually the dual of the projective space of the linear system. Um, so far, we've just been looking at linear systems on projective space, which are particularly easy because projective space has vanishing Picard groups. So let's look at an example with um, sorry, not non-vanishing Picard group, vanishing Picard variety. So let's look at an example with a non-vanishing Picard variety. And here I'm going to take X to be an elliptic curve. And as usual, we're going to cheat a bit by doing it over the complex numbers so that we can use analysis and elliptic functions to see what's going on. And we're going to look at some linear systems of divisors over the elliptic curve. So there are two ways to think of the elliptic curve. You can either think of it as being 
C, modulo a lattice, which is a sort of analytic way of doing it. Or you can write it as a curve y squared equals 4x cubed minus g2, g2x minus g3. And the connection is that you, 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 x and y correspond to elliptic functions. So you remember there's an elliptic function p of z, and we have its derivative p dash of z. And y is equal to the derivative of the elliptic function, and x is equal to the elliptic function p of z. So this is this just becomes the usual differential equation for the via Streis elliptic function. You just write it out explicitly just to make it clear what's going on. So that is equal to p of z cubed minus g2 p of z minus g3. Um, so now let's look at a few divisors. First of all, let's take d naught to be a point, one times the point zero. Um, so um, if I draw the lattice for the elliptic curve, so here's some lattice contained in the complex numbers. Here's the point zero. And I'm just taking my divisor to consist of a single point hit here at zero. Um, then we can ask, um, the, 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 what are the sections of the corresponding line bundle? Well, um, the sections of L naught just consist, correspond to elliptic functions with at most a single pole at naught. And the only elliptic function of this property is constant. So the sections um, of a corresponding line bundle um, just correspond to the constant elliptic function. So, so the linear system of this is just d naught. Um, so the linear system is naught dimensional and just consists of a single point. So, so for the projective line, if we had a single point, we could sort of move it round on the line and get a get a linear system of dimension one. For an elliptic curve, we can't move a point round. I mean, it's, it's not linearly equivalent to the point somewhere else. So, so the linear system just consists of a single point. And we notice that it has a base point consisting of this point naught, because obviously if the linear system just consists of the point naught, then, then naught is a point of all the divisors of the linear system, rather trivially. Um, so um, uh, now what happens if we take a divisor con to consist of two copies of this point zero? So now we're going to take d naught to be two copies of naught. Well, now um, we get more functions in the corresponding line bundle because we can get the function one and we can also get um, the via Streis elliptic function, which has at most a double pole here. So. So we get all functions of the form a plus b times p of z. And now we can ask, um, what are the corresponding divisors corresponding to this? Well, the divisors consist of a point plus minus the point. So if we've got an elliptic curve here, a typical divisor on this linear system will consist of a point here and minus the point, or we might get another um, pair of points of the linear system, we might have a point over here and a point over here and so on. Um, and what do these look like um, in the algebraic curve y squared equals 4x cubed minus g2x minus g3? So the elliptic curve might look something like this. Well, what they consist of is pairs of points with the same um, with the same x coordinate. And they have to the same value of p and the same value of 1. So um, the pair of blue points might correspond to a pair of blue points there, and the pair of red points might correspond to a pair of red points somewhere else, and so on. So uh, they, they, they just have the same coordinate. You notice, by the way, there are three double points in this linear system. So th th there's one double point here. Let me use a color that's different from red. 
a double point here, and there's a double point here, and a double point here, and a double point here. So at each half lattice point, there's actually a double point. And these correspond to these three points on the, on the elliptic curve, because you see that's a sort of, um, that, that, that's where the vertical line intersects the elliptic curve in a double point. So, um, um, so uh, now let's see what happens if we take D to be three times the point zero. So this time the linear system is going to consist of point Z1, Z2 and Z3 such that Z1 plus C2 plus C3 equals zero. Here we're working inside C modulo the lattice L. Um, so what does this look like in, um, in for the elliptic curve? Well, let's think about what we're doing. The, the corresponding space of sections of line bundle is three-dimensional and spanned by one P and the derivative of P. So we're looking at um, points with A plus B times P plus C times P prime equals zero. So these are going to be the, so Z1, Z2, and Z3 are going to be the zeros of this function. So this vanishes at Z1, Z2, and Z3. Well, this just says A plus BX plus CY equals zero. So the linear system just consists of triples of points lying on a straight line. So here's a straight line, and this would be, um, this might be Z1, Z2, and Z3. And any other line, we can draw any other straight line like this one here. And again, this, these three points will be an element of the linear system. So in this case, the linear system consists of triples of collinear points on the elliptic curve. You can also what hap ask what happens if instead of asking for z1 plus z2 equals z3 equals naught, we ask for z1 plus c2 plus z3 equals something else. So now let's take d naught to be, say, naught plus some point z. Now the linear system will consist of point z1, z2, with Z1 plus C2 plus um, equals Z, or Z1 plus C2 plus minus C equals naught. Again, this is in C modulo L. So what does this look like on the elliptic curve? Well, if we draw the elliptic curve, and if we pick a point, if we pick some fixed point here, then the linear system is just going to consist of pairs of points lying on the line through this. So, so this pair of points will be on the linear system, or this pair of points will also be on the linear system. So the linear system is going to be pairs of points, um, say, um, uh, R S such that such that R S and T are collinear for some fixed point T. Um, so um, what this shows is that the elliptic curve has continuous families of linear systems. So for pro projective line, we only got a discrete set of linear systems. Um, where the linear system was determined by uh, the degree of the points in it. But, but for elliptic curves, we've got a continuous family of different linear systems because the point Z varies continuously. Um, okay, that's all I want to say about linear systems. So next lecture, we'll be looking at a very general construction, which generalizes both the construction of projective space and blowing up points.